This is my 21st physics lesson. It's on torque. Uh, we're going to look at a few things here. We're going to look at uh, what torque is. We're going to understand how to apply a force in an angle that you get the most torque at. Uh, we're going to look at the torque variables, know what they mean. And then we're going to be able to um, find a mass, weight, or distance to balance some torques out and create an equilibrium. So first of all, torque is this rotational equivalent of force. Um, so if you have a torque that's not zero, you're going to have an acceleration or a rotational acceleration going on. Um, tor torque is going to occur around a fulcrum, and a fulcrum is just nothing more than a pivot point. So it's an area where, where rotation is allowed to occur. And this triangle represents the fulcrum. It often represents the fulcrum on a lot of diagrams. There's two types of rotations. Since we're going to have clockwise and counterclockwise acceleration, we need to know, so you're going to see often small letters rather than, than big letters, CW for clockwise. If you ever forget what clockwise is, just look at a clock and watch the hands and you'll see it go on. Or counterclockwise, which is going to be the opposite direction. And just to start thinking about things, we're going to use positives for clockwise and negatives for counterclockwise for longer problems. So torque occurs when there's a force perpendicular. So perpendicular is going to be at 90 degrees from a lever. Here's your lever, and there's a lever of a, of a distance length from the fulcrum. And it's 90 degrees if you have at least a component that has a perpendicular, um, perpendicular, compo perpendicular component of force, then you're going to have torque created. Some of the variables we're going to use, torque is often a little T-looking symbol. Um, it's going to be newtons times meters. Per perpendicular force is just going to be that force at a 90 degree angle from wherever that fulcrum is. And that's going to be newtons just like before. It's going to be a force, and that's going to be capital N. Uh, I use this to represent a different type uh, perpendicular force. I guess I did. I used it for the same thing. I called it perpendicular force before, just in a different scenario in inclined planes. Um, and then distance, we're going to use D, and that's going to be in meters. So here's your force for your torque equation. Uh, torque equals force perpendicular times distance. So the further distance away, the greater the torque you're going to have, the more force that you apply perpendicular, the greater the torque you're going to have as well. How much torque do you need do you create with 100 Newton perpendicular force placed 0.45 meters from the fulcrum? Well, here you have 0 0.45 meters away, and you're going to have, let's say, fulcrums here. You have 100 Newtons perpendicular, and we just go to our basic torque equation. Torque equals force perpendicular times distance. It's all perpendicular in this question. If they don't tell you otherwise, just assume it's per perpendicular. Um, and so we plug in our values, 100 for the force perpendicular, 45, 0.45 for the distance. And we get 45. And once again, the new unit that we've seen is for torque. Make sure you remember newtons times meters as your unit. Here's another question. How much force would Joe have to apply perpendicular to create a 550 newton meter, newton meters? And sometimes you see newton dot meters for newtons times meters, but that's all that is, whether there's a dot or not there, of torque. 0.20 meters away from the bolt he's trying to loosen. So we are given torque this time, not given force, and we're, we're given a distance, and we're to rearrange that. So once again, d divide by D, that gets rid of the D, F equals torque over distance. Now we have numbers we can plug in. And when we plug those numbers in, we're going to get, just like before, our SI unit for force was newtons. Um, when you get to the end of this, meters cancels out, and it gets back to newtons. So 2,750 newtons is the is a perpendicular force. Okay, so now not all the time you 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 know, maybe it might not be as easy to apply a force directly perpendicular. So you might have to fly apply a force at a different angle. Every time you apply a force at a different angle and actually further away, further and further and further away from that perpendicular, they're they're being perpendicular to the lever. So the further away you go that way, the less force, less perpendicular force you get out of it. To the point where if you're directly parallel, just think about it, if you're gonna be trying to um, turn a wrench and you're pushing this way, you're not going to get anything going. You're going to push right at the directly parallel to the um, to the axis where the, the bolt would have been. Nothing's happening. The best thing you can do is apply force directly perpendicular and as far away as possible applying a force perpendicular would be the best way to do do this. So no for no torque when force is parallel. Once again when I went force being parallel means this, parallel to the lever itself. 
Why, well, what torque results from 250 newton force 30 degrees from the perpendicular on a wrench 0.28 meters away from the bolt? So this this picture right here is 30 away, it's 30 newtons or 30 degrees away from from this perpendicular where you'd get the most the most um, torque out of it, the most force out of it, force going into torque. So we have to go ahead and set up a little triangle. And if we solve for this side, we'll figure out how much of this 250 newtons, how much of this 250 newtons of force actually go into the perpendicular force, which goes into torque. So we have adjacent and hypotenuse, and that's going to lead you cosine angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. That rearranges to this. Uh, we can plug in some values. 30 degrees is our is our degree is our angle and we have uh, 250 newtons of force and when you plug those in and just make sure you calculate in degrees not radians you should get 216.51 newtons so you, you do expect it's going to be a smaller size so it's going to be a smaller number um, versus the 250 newtons that was actually applied by this person and now we can just do the equation from here solving for torque we have a force perpendicular and a distance we pull that back in that's our new force perpendicular that's our actual force perpendicular that goes into the equation we plug in the equation multiply the numbers and you should get 60.62 newton meters of torque and um, torque is a torque is a uh, and if this was the case just based on the way this is looking this might and we might want to say clockwise if that was exactly it but this question itself doesn't give us enough information to know if it's clockwise or counterclockwise but this would have rotated clockwise torque is a vector so it's important to have a direction if you know it you add multiple torques together um, so let's say we have a couple torques going on we're gonna go ahead and figure out some of the torques by adding the torques but before we do that we're gonna have to take into account is it clockwise or is it counterclockwise and it's counterclockwise, we're going to use negatives, and clockwise, we're going to use positives. Once we take into account the vector direction by using positives and negatives, we add as many torques as we have going on in a scenario, and then we just add those together. Balanced torque equations, what we do is we, we can go ahead, and it's the same thing, but, but the actual overall sum of the torque is zero. So this ends up coming out of that last equation when you made this zero and you have everything else that's going on in an equation that way. Well, you're going to have some negatives if it's, if it's if let's say F2, uh, F, let's say based on this is, this is the way this is written. If F1, D1 was, uh, was on this side, which it is, it's going to create a torque that is going to be counterclockwise. And we would have said that's a negative torque, and so we would put a negative value in that. Well, if we have a negative on this side added to a positive, we could just add this to both sides which we do that gets rid of this that throws it on this side so the balanced torque equation pretty much the way to think about this is if you picture the fulcrum in the middle anything that's going to be creating a torque so it would have to be some sort of weight on a on this lever anything that's going to create a torque that's going to be counterclockwise you throw on this side anything that would create a torque clockwise you throw on this side and so if you have like you know three objects over here you well you might have three distances and three three force perpendiculars that result from that and you can kind of do the same thing but wherever this equal sign is is where the fulcrum is and if you have a couple more objects over here then you could just add it to this side and once again numbers just represent object one two three four so that could change depending on what you're trying to do with the, with the problem okay how far away from the other side of Tito Trotter must 80 kilogram Joe sit than Mary who's 40 kilograms so we have a picture going on here um, We've got Joe over here. It doesn't tell us what side um, they're on, so we'll go ahead and make 80 kilogram. Let's go ahead and turn that into newtons. So let's go ahead and make that. Joe is going to be 800 newtons, and he's going to be on, on this side. And we're trying to find out how far away he has to sit than Mary, and Mary's going to be over here 40 kilograms, so we can go ahead and, and put Mary over there. Well, Mary is going to be 40 kilograms. Well, she's going to be times 10 is going to be 400 newtons. There's Mary, there's a fulcrum. Um, this is one meter away, and we're trying to figure out, well, how far is Joe going to actually sit? When when one meter is 400, 400 newtons is one meter away on this side, we have 800 newtons. How far on the other side? So that ends up being this right here. We set it up. We got Mary, uh, make Joe on one side, put Mary on the other side, and then we're ready to 400 times one is just 400. We can take D and we can go ahead and divide the 800 away just get rid of 800 from here and that gets 800 there which becomes this thing underneath and then our, we get our answer of 0.5 meters is going to be the, the distance away.
that Joe would have to sit. Okay, so uh, more just balance systems. If you have more objects, you're gonna add more to that side. So here's an example. Here now we have two objects on this side, one object on that side. And oh, this is sorry, this is just a sum of, of all torques problem. So um, for sum of all torques, we're just gonna figure out the overall, what's all going on. And so we have to take into account, okay, so this object's gonna cause this counterclockwise torque. So we're gonna make this a negative number. This one is also going to cause a counterclockwise torque, so we're going to make that a negative number. This one's going to start a rotation, so this one would rotate the, the, the fulcrum, the lever, counterclockwise. This would rotate the lever clockwise. So this one right here, since this is on this side, it's going to make it go down that way. It's going to make this rotation occur. This is going to be a positive, positive um, torque. So we'll have to make these numbers. We'll make the first one. It doesn't matter where you put the negative, but it should be overall. This first one's negative. We got 19.6.4 meters away. We're going to add that to the next one, which is going to be a negative. So we're really subtracting, but but um, just for the sake of having a negative, negative attached to this, we're still adding everything, but it just happens to be this, this is a negative number. We've got the 9.8 newtons, and we got it 0.2 meters away. Once again, it's from the fulcrum every single time. This value, this value, and this value is all the way from the fulcrum. So it's always how far away this is. And the last one was a positive value because it's causing a clockwise rotation. And so we just put in all our numbers and we get a negative 833 because these ones went, end up winning out. Well, the negative stood for counterclockwise. So 8.33 Newton times meters clock, uh, counterclockwise because of the negative. This would be your final answer. Where should you place a 19.6 Newton weight to balance off a 9.8 Newton weight 0.4 meters away on the right? So where are we going to put this weight to balance off this weight where we know all the extra information? So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to plug in that 19.6 over here, causing the, the everything on this side is causing a counterclockwise torque. Everything on this side is causing a clockwise torque. And so we get our values to 9.8, the 0.4. We put that together. We divide the 19.6 by both sides. When we do that, we end up getting this 19.6, 9.8 times 0.4 divided by 19.6, and we get up to end up getting 0.2 meters as our answer. Okay, so now it's time to do the problem set. Uh, make sure you're doing this one on your own. Uh, there's things rephrased a little bit, um, but make sure you just come and check your work. If you need more help, go back to the beginning of this lesson and go back through it a little bit longer. But I'm going to continue in this video on the problem set. Uh, how much torque do you need to create? Uh, how much do you create with a 210 newton per perpendicular force placed 1.5 meters from the fulcrum? So they told you perpendicular, so it's going to go directly to the equation. And we have 210 newtons. We got 1.5 newton five, five meters away from the fulcrum, and we get an answer of 315 newton meters of torque. And it doesn't tell you uh, what what side it's on, so we don't really know the direction, even though it would have a direction. How much torque do you create with a 210 newton force 25 degrees from the perpendicular? Just place 1.5 meters from the fulcrum. Okay, so this 210 newtons is placed at a 25 degree angle, so you're not going to get all that. You're only going to get the adjacent side. So we're going to have to figure out how much of this 210 force is right here so we can do the next part, which is solve for the torque. Cosine 25, once again, make sure you're in degrees times the 210. We do expect it always to be less than the hypotenuse. If you get a number bigger than the hypotenuse, you did something wrong. And we get 190.32 newtons. It's going to go into torque. This is the perpendicular force. So now, the, now we go and answer this question. How much torque is there when we have 190.32 newtons perpendicular at a distance of 1.5? Plug in our values to the torque equation, torque equals perpendicular force times distance, and we get a value of 285.48 newton meters. How much torque is created by a point, uh, five kilogram block, two kilograms, so just this in this picture, five kilogram block, 0.2 meters away, 10 kilogram block, 0.4 meters away, and a five kilogram block, 0.6 meters away? Well, they're all gonna cause clockwise torque, so we're gonna use all positive values for these. Um, just to, to get the, the weights, we're gonna, and I just call the first one one, the second one two, the third one three, that's all this stands for. We just find the weight of two, one, two, and three. It's fifties. Uh, the five kilograms are going to be 50 newtons. The 10 kilograms are going to be uh, 100 newtons. And then we're ready just to set it up. They're all going to be clockwise. They're all going to be positive. We just go ahead and take the numbers, the forces, 
perpendicular because they're going to have weight straight down, weight straight down, weight straight down. Um, so it's already going to be perpendicular, and we're going to add them up. And we get 80 Newton meters clockwise as our answer because our final answer was positive on this one. How much mass should you put 0.4 meters away from the fulcrum? So how much mass should you put here? So I give you distances, and I ask you for the, the mass. Well, we're going to go ahead, and it's comparative. You can go around this, but um, I'm just going to go take you the long route for the sake of, of this. Figure out what the weight of the 50, um, the 50, the 5 kilograms is. We're trying to solve for the weight of that first one. Um, so we multiply the weight, mg, we multiply it by 10, we get 50 newtons here. And now we're ready just to plug in the values we have. We know this is 0.4 meters away. We know this is 50 newtons, 0.2 meters on the other side. Once again, causing clockwise torque, causing counterclockwise torque. And then we can just go ahead and solve for that. And when we solve for this, we divide out the 0.4 from both sides. We get 25 newtons. Well, we can go ahead and figure out the weight of 25 newtons. We rearrange FW equals mg. It becomes this. Plug in our values. We're pretty much dividing by 10 to get kilograms to meters. or Sorry, not meters. Kilograms to mass. Uh, um, sorry. Weight to mass. Weight in newtons to mass. So we take that 25 newtons divided by 10, and we get 2.5 kilograms. And so that's the final answer. That's how much mass this block would have had. You have a weight of 600 newtons and are on uh, and are 1.5 meters on the left of the side of the teeter charter with your 150 newton sister one meter away on the same side. So this picture right here, you have 600 newtons over here. You've got your sister who is 150 newtons and that far away. Um, we know Bob based on this question is 1,000 newtons. And we're going to go ahead and set it up. When we set it up, it's going to look something like this. We got the 600 sister uh, U, 1.5 meters away. Plus, we're adding everything. I'll add all the torques, not multiply all the torques on, on each side. Uh, now 150, the one meter away. And that equals, once again, wherever the fulcrum is, you can just throw equal signs there and add everything on the other side to it. It's kind of how the equation works. Um, 1,000 times D3. We put that together, we get 1050. We divide the 1,000 by both sides to get rid of this 1,000. And so therefore, we get D3 equals 1050 divided by that 1,000. And our answer here is 1.05 meters.